investigative journalism. The country's best reporters. Welcome to Sunday. Power, real power. Where does it lie? Who with? And how does it affect you? Now, in trying to draw up a list of the most influential power brokers out there, we teamed up with the New Zealand Listener magazine. Each year, they come up with the 50 people they rate as the most powerful in New Zealand, the people who most influence our lives and values. Well, 50 is a bit much for us tonight, but we picked three, and they might just come as a surprise. Here's Garth Bray. These are the faces of the 50 most powerful people in New Zealand. Some you'll recognise, and some you won't. As we discovered, looks can be very deceiving. So what is power? Well, that depends on how you define it. But when we looked at the list, we found three names. They're not in the top 10, but perhaps they should be, especially when you consider the amount of influence they have over ordinary, everyday lives. Chairman Mao said power grows from the barrel of a gun. It's amazing. New but what about the barrel of a lipstick? I can feel the moisture. New Glam Shine Cream from L'Oreal. Meet Frances Stead. She heads L'Oreal here, the biggest cosmetics company at 40% of the market. Frances is number 40 on the official power list, but don't let that ranking fool you. Voila. We do believe in sticking an account, in, in pushing the boat out, in taking gambles. What's the biggest one you've taken? Fashion Week would certainly be one. 62 hair and makeup artists charging $600 a day, and they've been here all week. All of these gorgeous models. Look at the hair there. Isn't that fantastic? Frances is signing off the bill. Our estimate, close to $200,000. She's backstage with her husband and two children, keeping a close eye on her investment. We certainly find the colours that we use um, at Fashion Week, which are, of course, the new colours coming in. Then we see on the street within, within a matter of days. What is power exactly? You tell me. <laughs> <laughs> Do you not like the word? Um, I think influence is probably a better, a better word. I try and influence um, people's thinking. Um, a key part of my role in business, I think, is to throw a spanner in the works and say, well, you know, what if, have we thought of this? Francis learned about feeling powerless supporting this cancer charity. Oh, I know that there are times when you feel down but I also know that if you look good, that helps you feel a lot better about yourself. And this is the trick. Less is best, blend, blend, blend. Frances was involved before she came to New Zealand in 1993, just before they found cancer in her lymph nodes. Luckily, I'm bloody minded enough that, um, you know, I didn't have that problem um, because I had a company that could teach me how to overcome those visual side effects and I had two kids that were then four and one, and there was no way I was going to let cancer win. <laughs> woo, woo, woo. Good boy. Frances beat her cancer, but winning is not new to her. She rode for England as an eventer. Don't eat the tree. Now she buys horses for New Zealand's top eventers from her own pocket. Two will compete in Adelaide next week. I guess it's a bit like the sport I used to do of modern pentathlon, um, which is five sports make up one result. I suspect my nomination to the list is a combination of not being um, enormously influenced in any one of those areas, but you put the lot together. Refinish polishes and research. L'Oreal makes a lot selling women images of beauty with a brush stroke. That gave a great message. But men dominate L'Oreal, French men. Yeah. It's really interesting because all over the world, actually, we see this trend. Yeah. When they sent Frances here, she was the first foreigner and the first woman to head an international division. This year's um, colour trophy with obviously the winning shots. I think power might be. Um, the, getting the your own way, but I think influence is actually a much more positive thing than power. But yes, I don't believe my style of management is ever dictatorial. 
You say, this is right for Britain. This is the way we go. And I made myself clear. That didn't stop one boss comparing France's stead with Britain's former Prime Minister, Margaret Thatcher. Both went to the same college, did the same degree. And then she stayed on and did um, a second degree. Um, but I just stopped at chemistry. And that's why they called you the Iron Lady? That's right. <laughs> the only reason? No, it was partly that and partly the fact that um, I tended to argue for what I thought was right for my countries. And it uh, wasn't always what Paris wants to hear. And what Paris wants to hear is the sound of a cash register ringing up the sales. Worldwide, $29 billion last year. New Zealand's share of L'Oreal sales, $100 million, is pint size, even if it happens to be the market leader. Who are you accountable to? Is it Mrs New Zealand? Is it a bloke in Paris? Both. The way, um, number one, Mrs New Zealand. Because without Mrs New Zealand supporting our company and our brands, I don't have a job. <laughs> um, so, number one is always the consumer. This is a trip. A marketing budget of almost $30 million makes her a top client for most magazines. Her TV advertising account is a rich prize. Colour booster technology. I think um, a key measure of influence is choosing, choosing which opportunities you think you can really maximise um, and then going for it.